Right now we're going to turn to the example of the Mackie Onyx 1220i. It is a production console that's designed to be a firewire input and output, which allows us to send a firewire signal from the console to a computer to integrate more easily uh, in the digital world. We don't see as much of the firewire going on these days, but uh, it was popular for a little while there as people tried to develop consoles that would interface with digital recording devices like Adobe Audition. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual Onyx. I'm going to make a switch here on the camera. Right here you're getting an opportunity to look at the console. We did see the sort of schematic of this console and so you have some idea of what the pieces or parts are like. Up in the right hand corner you can see we've got our XLR and our quarter inch input. We've got our button for our adjusting the high impedance or low impedance line input. Uh, particularly if we have instruments coming through we might want to set it up so that it can adapt to the signal that's coming in from electric instrument. Below that we've got the high pass filter and then the 48 volts phantom power which is valuable for condenser microphones. Uh, keep in mind that having the 48 volts in with a dynamic microphone isn't going to do anything dramatic to it. Uh, so sometimes people end up leaving those phantom power buttons in. And then we've got our gain. Positive or negative, it can boost or cut. Unfortunately these boards are a little bit noisy so when you turn up the gain here you're really boosting some of the noise associated with it and that's unfortunate but sometimes it's necessary. Just below that we've got our firewire button so this allows us to send the signal from this channel to our recording device either before it travels the rest of the way through the channel or after it travels the rest of the way. So there's an advantage to having it before because we can do some mixing here process the signal for perhaps a concert, right? Maybe we're doing a local um, performance of a music performance, maybe a, a local band, and they're trying to do a recording of their show. We might want to equalize the sound for the room so that the audience can hear things in an effective way, but we also want to record it and be able to manipulate it later. So if we put in the pre-firewire here, it'll send the signal before the equalization and that will allow us to record a signal that can be then adjusted later on and it won't be adjusted for the room that the performance is happening in. Our equalization is here as I said we've got a 12k boost or cut here and U is the unity gain so there's no adjustment there and in the second two we've got they work in tandem we've got mid-range control we can adjust the frequency some, somewhere between 100 hertz and 8 kilohertz. And so it's quite a wide range. Uh, and then boost or cut at that. And then the low boost or cut is at 80 hertz. And I just need to make that a little bit lower for you so you can see those key components. There you go. So these are our equalization, and if we move things over to the right a little bit, you can see there's an adjustment in the equalization. The character of it is a little bit different. It's not quite the same number of adjustments. The mid-range is just a single booster cut at 2.5 kilohertz. That's here. And that's because these channels, the four to the right, are different from the four to the left. The four to the left are set up to be microphone or line input. The four to the right are set up to be either mono, line, or they could be stereo line inputs. And I'm going to lower this a little bit further. And you can see these red and orange uh, controls, auxiliary one and two, allow you to send part of this signal out to an outboard processing device like a delay system and then we can bring it back it would come back through hang on a second I'm gonna just show you over here to the right 
these are the controls where we can get a return to the mix. So we can send these signal to a delay or reverb and then bring a certain amount of it back in to the overall mix. At the just below our auxiliary controls, you can see we have these pan buttons. Pan allows us to control where the signal is from the left to the right within the stereo signal or the stereo range. And so we will often use that uh, if we've got a, a stereo um, setup going, like a coincident microphone system coming in to one of the channel, pair of the channels here, we might pan one to the hard left and one to the hard right, and now we will get a really wide stereo range that is part of our recording. If we move a little bit lower, I'm going to take this down a notch, and you can see the channels a little more clearly. So we've got our four channels here that can be adjusted so that they're either microphone or line inputs. We've got a mute button on our broadcast console we had on and off. We have our slider which operates the same as on the broadcast console. The broadcast console had the blue cross X's. Here it's a section that has a U in the middle of it and the U means unity gain and again that is where you're gonna get the best signal to noise ratio, the best sound quality out of the amplifier. And at the very bottom, which I can't quite help you see yet, you can't quite see the word on it, but this is a solo button, so much like the Q button that we saw on the um, broadcast console, this will allow us to listening to that particular channel all by itself without listening to the other signal might be going through the other channels. I want to bring your attention to these two little indicators. The red one is OL, and OL means overload. So it's a quick indicator there that we have got a signal that's way too loud. And when it's too loud, we are, it's getting our attention for us and helping us to go ahead and, and bring the level down so we don't distort. The minus 20, the green light, is indicating that there is at least a signal that's reaching the minus 20 threshold coming in. You may not hear it all the time. You may not see it on our overall meters, but this is a quick indicator that there is a good signal coming into that channel. So it's a nice little cue that something's happening in that channel so we can visually recognize it and then we can go and try to deal with it uh, in terms of mixing the audio. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and raise this up so that we can check out the very top part of the console. Sorry about the um, little shaky hand, but at the top we can have our outputs, the main out. We have a tape output. We can do other mixes. Alt 3, 4 is an extra mix out. We also have our headphone output, so we can listen on headphones. Below that, we're going to be able to see our monitoring controls. There's a control room dial, and that's for the speakers. Headphone dial for the phones. And then we've got our metering, so we can visually meter what's going on. We've got our auxiliary that we've already talked about. And this console is a little bit different than some other ones that we've talked about is that it's got a master output which is called main mix on this particular console and it does have the opportunity to do some talk back with people in a studio or in a monitoring area. So that is the overview of our example of the production console. It is a, a good example overall and it is something that is uh, going to help us quite a bit when we are working on our own and starting to like, recognize the complexity of these kinds of consoles. And we will play with a, a little bit with these uh, in our lab sections. So that sums up our production. Remember, versatility is key here, and it is something that is really much more complex and takes a little more time to learn the nuances of.